Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. I'm Chef Christine Cushing, and I'm teaching horrible cooks how to become fearless in the kitchen. Today, someone who gets totally stressed in the kitchen. Ow, 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 that's hot. He goes from searing sashimi. Call the fire department. Use extreme heat, that's what I'm doing. To preparing an amuse-bouche for a restaurant full of customers. Start cooking these. Can he learn to relax and find his zen in the kitchen? Are you breathing? Um, just when you said to, I remember to. Or will his celebrity friends end up in gastronomic distress? I don't want to be sick later tonight. Zane is a talented TV host who has no talent in the kitchen. Zane handles a lot of tough situations as a television host, but he really can't handle cooking. Zane is a non-cook. I don't even remember a bowl of chips on the table when you'd come over. He doesn't make food in his kitchen. He brings food into his kitchen and eats it. I don't have cooking skills. I have great reheating skills. For the first time I ever tried to cook a meal out of a cookbook, it was a stir fry. And I both burnt it and made it really soggy. Poor thing, he's a bit of a bumbling idiot in the kitchen. Zane's a perfectionist who finds the kitchen a stressful place. To me, food stresses me out. When I make stuff, it's just a disappointing experience. He likes to be excellent at everything. The thought of being bad at it is daunting for him. I want Christine to teach me the basics. Then I can throw a dinner party for my friends where it is an enjoyable social experience. I'm gonna give Zane a crash course in the culinary basics. If I'm successful, he'll be able to make quick, healthy meals that look and taste great. OK, Christine, here we are. OK, Zane, what's important about now? Why do you want to learn to cook now? In my life, there's so many things that I kept saying, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this, and I never do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the point right now, I'm like, stop saying I'm going to do it, but rather just do it. OK, so finish the sentence for me. Uh oh Food, to me, is blank. Stressful. There's cookbooks out there that I'm like, okay, this is a healthy cookbook. Mm -hmm. I want to make this, but it takes so many ingredients that I should just not a restaurant. Okay, I'm gonna turn your experience in the kitchen from stressful to enjoyable. So I think the first step in our journey is to have me see you cook something by yourself. Okay. Wait, do I get a recipe? I have to make it up? What's going on? What I'd like for you to make me is an egg white omelet. I chose an egg white omelet for Zane because it's a simple recipe that should be quick, healthy, and easy for him to make. And the key here is that both you and I have to taste it. There's way more things on this counter than I've ever had in my kitchen at any time. What is this? Is this a cheese? Ew. Yeah, is that like cream cheese or something? It's a shortening. <laughs> Tomato. Zane is definitely not good with those knives. Not only does he need to learn how to chop, but he's got to stop using that bread knife to cut vegetables. I'm gonna just saute the mushrooms and the green peppers. Okay, this is where the stress comes in. Being a perfectionist doesn't allow me to have fun with this, because I'm like, it's gotta turn out right. It's gotta look like the picture. It's gotta taste amazing. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Yeah, that part, that part you don't look at. Remember, I have to eat this Look, and garnishy stuff. Creative. <laughs> there we go. It's all in the presentation. Uh, it's really not good. Okay. It's bland, plain, and there's um, yeah. no seasoning. No, I don't like seasoning. This is like normal. So this is normal This is why I don't like eating what I cook. Okay. It's not what I want my food to be like. I want it to be like, oh, I can't wait to eat this. 
and I can't wait to make this again. Let us clean this up, and then we're gonna make a fantastic, sexy omelet. A One sexy omelet. Sexy omelet. A sexy omelet. Do you think omelets can be sexy? We'll find out. No wonder Zane's cooking always turns out as badly as that omelet. He doesn't have any culinary skills, so I really need to build his confidence and get him more comfortable in the kitchen. In order to do that, I'm just gonna key in on two things that I know he's gonna love. It's gotta be quick and healthy. So let's okay. do a little bit of chopping together. Sure. Now what we don't want to do is use what you did, that big, long, serrated knife, mm. because you'll just be sawing and you can't get good technique there, okay. right? So this is a French chef's knife. It's perfect for chopping vegetables and slicing meat. It's like a weapon. It is like a weapon. You're going to put your fingers this way. See that? But you don't keep your fingers extended. You're holding them, so you're actually your knuckle is touching okay. the knife, right? Like that? Yeah. Now let's take the pepper. Instead of slicing it with the skin side up, because that's the toughest part, if you slice it with the skin side down, it'll keep your knife sharper. Keep your fingers tucked. Oh, and then... Yes. One thing I need to teach Zane about is seasoning. He thinks seasoning means lots of spice. It doesn't. It just means salt and pepper, two really critical ingredients that bring out the flavor of food. Some cracked black pepper, because the pepper not only has heat, but it also does have a flavor. I'm going to add the eggs to the pan, and I'm going to swirl it right away. Everybody seems to think that you should flip an omelet two or three times. That's going to kill it because it overcooks it. See how the center is almost fully Cook. cooked? Yeah. But you never flipped it? Yeah. So a little bit of that. OK, so a little bit of Canadian Havarti, grated, because we want to get that nice ooey gooey flavor. And then just fold over the edge. That was easy. It was easy. So now is where we get it even more sexy. This is good. Do you like the cheese in it? I do like the yeah. cheese in it. I love cheese. I always like to put cheese in when I make an omelet. I think this is going to be something that you can make your own whenever you want to do something that's quick, healthy, sexy. I'm seeing the potential of what I can do when I have the proper equipment and the proper skill set, and that there is a method as opposed to approaching with a madness. We're going to get out of the kitchen, have a lot more fun, yeah. and just kind of break out of this stress. OK. OK. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Coming up, Zane learns five steps to searing sashimi. I hear searing. He's cooking already. Damn. And later, he makes blinis and borscht for a restaurant full of people. We operate at a very high level, so the expectations right through the roof. Zane's a TV host who gets stressed out in the kitchen. Yeah, this is where the stress comes in. But I'm teaching him to cook meals that are quick and healthy. See how the center is almost fully cooked? cooked? Yeah. So he can relax and have fun when he's cooking. It was easy. Oh. Zane loved our egg white omelet. This is good. And now we're off to learn another quick and healthy dish, seared tuna. Hey, John. Hey, Christine. Good to see you again. Very good to see you. This is Zane. Hi. Zane, nice to meet you. John. How are you? He owns the Academy. Are you ready to sear some tuna? Yes, I am. Let's get going. For a guy who does takeout all the time, this is a perfect dish. Because Zane loves sushi, and this will be a quick dish he can make at home. The key first thing is you need to be working with fresh product, OK? okay. So you ask for sushi-grade tuna. And does um, the supermarket have that? A lot of the supermarkets will have it. Yeah. Or a fishmonger in your neighborhood will have it for sure. OK. Now, step one, seasoning. So seasoning. Seasoning. A little bit of salt, and then pepper. Next step, grating the ginger. Yeah, just watch those fingers. We're going to move now to the pan and see the tuna. A lot of people are afraid to cook on high heat. You, no, I am really need... good at that. OK, so grab your tuna. Yeah. Why did we all back up? You hear that? Yeah. Hear that? <laughs> OK. And there's your sizzle. So we're going to flip it this way. Slicing is next. Take your knife, and we just want to slice this tuna. Yeah. OK? Why don't you try one? OK. OK? Nice and easy. And you're going to be just on a slight yeah, angle. Just, yeah. Now, I'm going to do a little plate presentation. I'm going to show you how to make this plate look a little sexy. What was great about this is it was demystifying the process. It's not as complicated. I can do this again. And voila. If that isn't quick and healthy, I don't know what is. This is good. I'm going to devour the whole thing. OK, so what Zane doesn't know is now he's getting into a searing competition with me. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Go. So. Oh, you want to hear the grater going? Yeah. Magic. Now I'm in the lead. Watch those fingers. OK. Oh. Mark, I hear Siri. Oh, she's cooking already. Damn it. <laughs> a lot of 
lot of smoke happening on your pan over there. 911, call the fire department. Can't use extreme heat, that's what I'm doing. No, I don't know how to turn this off. We got slicing over here. Done. Notice I'm ignoring that you said done. If you were working for me in the restaurant and you have a customer waiting at the table, they'd be so happy when they got that. I'll give you great marks for yeah. the searing. Yeah. You actually have it yeah. perfectly around. Yeah. You didn't leave it too much on one side because that's the yeah. trickiest yeah. part sometimes. Great. Good job. Is that a pity shake? No. <laughs> Obviously, she won, but it was good to know that I can do it and where I can go from here. John? Thank you so much, this was Pleasure. fantastic. I'm really making progress with Zane through these quick, healthy dishes. He's gaining confidence and is much less stressed about cooking. And now, we're back to Zane's, where I'm gonna keep building his skills with yet another quick, healthy recipe, my take on Vietnamese pho. Zane, now we're gonna make a Vietnamese-style beef and noodle soup. This pho is gonna be an easy, healthy, quick recipe where you can show off your newfound slicing skills. Okay. On the back burner, okay. there's some prepared Beef stock. Okay. Okay, you're not gonna and make okay it. And you're okay with that? I'm okay with that. Okay. This is a shortcut. So you man the burner on this side, okay. and I'm gonna show you everything that's going in there. Mm -hmm. Just trying to build on the flavor, right? These are spices that have lots of fragrance and flavor. Mm -hmm. This is star anise. It smells kind of like licorice. Exactly. Bingo. Pop it in there. And now, coriander seeds. Okay, so, so this is the ground up version of that? That's right. So just taking a little handful. Yeah. Now we're gonna add a little ginger. So now we're gonna let that simmer. Look at that, come on! I have to say that it makes a humongous difference using a sharp knife. Doesn't it? Just that one thing. Oh, God. That knife you were using was terrible. Ridiculous. A trick to help you slice, take a fresh piece of meat or a fresh piece of tuna and just pop it in the freezer for a few minutes while you're preparing the ingredients. Makes it easier to slice when it's cold oh. because we're slicing the beef raw. So the warmth of that soup poured over top of it is really just gonna cook it and keep it tender. Now we're cooking these flat rice noodles for about 30 seconds. So the noodles are off the heat. I want you to test one for me. Like just reach do it and grab oh, it. Oh, here, yeah, just grab one. Ow, 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 that's hot. Sorry, I have the asbestos hands. No. I'm putting in a little bit of the noodles and we're just gonna lay it down in there. This broth is at the boiling point. And in a matter of seconds, it cooks it. Ooh, wow. Coming up, can Zane handle the stress of an industrial kitchen? Start cooking these. And later, will his big dinner party end up in disaster? I'm very nervous for, you know, the word <laughs> salmonella. Zane's friends know he's a terrible cook. Zane does not go near a kitchen. Fingers crossed, he doesn't get us sick. But he really wants to take the stress out of cooking. It's now gone to the point where I just eat out so much that I don't even enjoy that. So I'm showing him how to cook quick and healthy meals. Keep your fingers tucked. An incredible egg white omelet. That's easy. A little seared tuna. Okay, I want to devour the whole thing. And now we're making a phenomenal Vietnamese soup, beef pho. So really this is about layering all the different flavors. You had the aromatics of the spices, now you're adding in the herbs. Guess what time it is now? Eating time! Eating time. Oh, this is, this is good, this is tender. And the flavors aren't overwhelming. Huh? Subtle. Subtle. It tastes clean. It feels like it's something more than just, you know, vegetables and meat. Mm. It's got that wow factor. I think you need a wow factor. I'm starting to see that I can use a variety of spices and it makes the food taste like it was worth making and it was worth eating. Okay, Zane, so now that I think you've mastered quite a few things, techniques in the kitchen, we're gonna go from a little boiling stock to the boiler house. Oh, what is this? You're gonna be making amuse-bouche for this entire restaurant. What? Let me get this straight. I've never worked in a kitchen. I don't cook. You bring me into a restaurant. You want me to make a amuse-bouche for 100 people? <laughs> I don't even know what amuse-bouche is. Hey, Jason. Hey, Christine, how's it going? Very good, very good to see you. you this too. is Zane. Hey, Zane, how you doing? Jason Ross, Zane, nice to meet you. Jason. Nice to meet you. Jason, do you want to read Zane the riot act for tonight? Absolutely. So you're going to make the amuse-bouche for tonight? Okay. okay. At about 90 minutes from now, the main dining room of the boiler house is going to be completely packed with about 90 people. 
here at the Boiler House, we operate at a very high level, so the expectations right through the roof. We put a lot of trust and faith in you that you're going to produce something amazing for our guests tonight. Okay. I've chosen this amuse bouche for Zane because it's time for me to push him beyond his current limits. This dish is difficult to make, but it's going to look fantastic when we serve it to the guests. If he can pull this off, he's going to have a whole newfound confidence in the kitchen. Amuse bouche. This is the dish before the appetizer. The appetizer is generally a larger plated thing. Right. The amuse bouche is something that the chef sends out to say, here, welcome. It's like the trailer of the movie. It's the trailer of the movie. Okay. It's the best. It's what you can expect. Okay. okay. We are doing a handmade blini with smoked salmon and a little borscht. It's like a little funky combination. Oh, okay. So the first thing we have to do is make the batter for the blini. Blini is essentially a yeast raised pancake. This blini batter is really finicky. They come out looking beautiful, but we gotta make it just right. Do we have a small spoon that can scoop out the innards of this? Zane wants to do everything nice and slowly, but we're working on a deadline here. We need to serve this in 75 minutes. It's not looking perfect, but I don't want to make any changes to this until we've let it rest for about 40 minutes. So while we make the uh, borscht, 40 minutes, oh man, okay. How's it going, Christine? Um, it's okay. Yeah. What's our time now? We've got about 60 minutes. Have you started the borscht at all yet? Or? Okay. We're gonna put that on right now. This is perfect. Okay, let's go now. We gotta make the borscht quickly. We're gonna put all this stuff in that big processor over there. Oh, this is ridiculous. I have a greater appreciation for people who work in a kitchen, especially at this level. How's it going over there with the borscht? Okay, can you come and look at this? That's not a boil, right? What is it's, that? It is boiling. Yeah. It hasn't come up to full temperature yeah. yet. No, no, it's good. Okay, I'm gonna stir this, because we gotta get moving on these blinis now. The secret to a good blini is all in the batter. It's pretty gloopy. Let's try one before we start making and getting our minds around it, right. and see where we go from there. The flavor, I think, is really good. The problem right now is we've run out of time. With all this batter mixing, we have run out of time. I've got to go find the chef and ask him for some grace time because we're not ready to serve yet. Start cooking these. Jason, can I talk to you for a second? What's the most that we can push this? We're really not... Behind? Uh, well, yeah, we are. Uh, maybe 10? I don't think we can do it in 10. Zane and I are taking way too long to make our blini and borscht amuse bouche. Flavor, I think, is really good. The problem now is we've run out of time. I had to pull Jason aside and ask for a little more time. I don't think we can do it in 10. 15? 15. 15 minutes? 15 I'll hold minutes. it for 15 minutes. Okay. Okay. All right, All right. I'll see what we can okay. do. Okay, thank you. Um, the borscht is done. Let's taste our borscht. We definitely need some pepper and some chopped dill. And let's go plate these suckers. It's time to rock and roll. Customers are waiting. These got to go out right now. Christine, how's it going? We're good. You good look. to go? All right, that looks, look. looks amazing. It's an incredible job. I need two to go right away. Okay. Yeah, I got to be able to die to eat. Grab it. Let's go. What you'll be enjoying this evening is your amuse bouche, gentlemen, is borscht with a touch of creme fraiche topped off with dill. Very nice. Yeah. Where's my tips? Where's my tips? There you go. The blinis, it's, it's exceptional. <laughs> Absolutely exceptional. What you're about to enjoy here is an amuse bouche made from the Russian tradition. It's good. One it's of my favorites. Work. Is this one of your favorites? Already. Really? I'm impressed. It was really a stressful situation, but Zane managed to keep it together. He's really learning that cooking can be enjoyable. But now he's got to go back home and cook for his friends who know how bad a cook he was. So, Zane? Yes? Your big moment? Mm hmm Your solo performance in the kitchen? So what you're going to be making yes. is a quick pan-seared sushi-grade salmon, and you're going to serve that with a great little slaw of carrot and Asian pear. Oh, this is actually my favorite fruit. Really? Yeah. I love that. I love how that. you just pick random stuff and you Zane? know, you know the Zane. Then you're going to do a shabu-shabu broth. It's essentially a Japanese-style fondue. A lot is riding on this. And not in a stressful way, but in an exciting way. But based on my experiences leading up to here, I'm a little hesitant about how it's going to go. Okay, here we go. 
one sheet of kombu seaweed. From the beginning, Zane said to me he always felt overwhelmed in the kitchen. If he's going to be successful to get this dinner together, he has to really learn to focus and breathe. Are you breathing? Um, just when you said to, I remembered to. <laughs> okay, fancy vegetable plates, done. What are my fresh herbs? Fresh herbs, you're just gonna do it with a little green. They're here. Oh. I have faith in Zane, but I'm a little concerned. I don't wanna leave and then be sick later tonight. I'm very nervous for, you know, the word <laughs> salmonella. I'm just concerned about flavor. Zane has the plainest palate out of anyone I've ever met. Yeah? It's so good. It's really good. It's succulent. Very fresh, very flavorful. The presentation is very nice. I was expecting it to be uh, really fishy, but it's not at all. Delicious. Nice. High five. That's a low five. That's <laughs> it. It's been quite the trek to get a little bit of zen into Zane's cooking. When I first met him, he was so overwhelmed in the kitchen by the littlest thing. And now look at him. He's basking in the glory of having created a phenomenal dinner for his friends. He truly is fearless in the kitchen. I want to be able to gather my friends around and the focus is that we're sharing food together. Whatever's in the center of the table, that can be changed. But what I'm creating with my friends, that will still remain the same. Visit myviva.ca slash fearless in the kitchen.